Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to hopefully help your chapter three homework go a lot smoother. So we're going to take a look at a question from section 3.2. We're going to take a look at question number seven. All right, so question number seven, suppose that a customer is purchasing a car and he proceeds to conduct an experiment in which he puts 10 gallons of gas in the car and drives until it runs out of gas. He conducts this, this experiment 15 times on each car and records the number of miles driven. Okay, so not a really realistic type scenario here, uh, at least not for someone who's buying a car, but this is what consumer protection groups do all the time to test different vehicles. And so, He's trying to choose which car to buy, and we're going to use some statistics to hopefully figure out what would the best option be. So it looks like the first thing we want to, let's see, it's asking us to describe each data set and the shape, center, spread. And it looks like the first thing up is the sample mean. Now, what I'm going to do is first, well, look at the full data set here. Click it. I want to open it in Microsoft Excel again. There's my file. We'll open it up in Excel. Remember, I got to make sure I enable editing. And there we go. There is my data set for car one and car two. All right, so the first thing we wanted was the mean. So I'm going to try to label everything here. So car one mean. How do I find the mean? Well, the formula for this, and every time we do a formula, you have to start with the equals key. So the formula equals and... I always just type the word average because the mean is really the average. So I want the average and to choose the numbers that I want, I got to start with a parentheses. So it'll be equals average, then start my parentheses. And I'm just going to select the entire set of data and press enter. Well, there's the mean for car one. I need to do it for both cars. So car two, the mean equals average and again select all the data press enter well there's the mean 249.1 and 251.1 well, and i believe it wants us to round to one decimal place let's see yes rounded to one decimal place as needed all right so the sample mean now remember there's no difference between finding a sample mean and a population mean uh, but there will be differences, well, when we do the standard deviation a little bit later. Uh, but for now, we should be good. So the sample mean. So again, car one was 249.1, 249.1. And car two was 251.1, 251.1. Again, rounding. Good. Next up, all right, the median for each of the cars. So their, their means were about the same. Let's see if there's any difference in their medians. So the car one median. Now for this, again, we want Excel to do the calculation. So that means we have to hit the equals button first. Then, well, I want the median. So I just type median. To make Excel do the calculations, I need parentheses. because I need to select the data that I'm going to use. So there's my data. Press enter. Car 1 had a median of 249. Car 2, median. So again, equals median parentheses and i'll select the data highlight all the data press enter and there we go median was 251. Uh, looks like the mean and the median are wow just about the same for each of these cars all right so 249 and 251 done all right next up the range all right so i think the easiest way to do the range uh, column A, and I want to sort from smallest to largest. Let's order the data, and we'll get Excel to do it for us. All right, Microsoft Excel found data next to your selection. Since you have not selected it, it will not be sorted. Well, good. I didn't select it for a reason. I want to continue with what I'm doing. Sort. And similarly, column 2, let's sort it from smallest to largest. Again, do what I tell you to do, please and click sort. So we have the smallest to largest. Now, to find the range, so car one, the range. Remember, range is the biggest minus the smallest data value. So I hit equals, because again, I want Excel to do the calculation. 
And since I have it ordered, I'll just click the biggest one at the bottom, then type the minus sign, then click the smallest one at the top, and there's my range. Car 1 had a range of 96 miles, and the car 2 range. Again, I want Excel to do the calculations, so equals, and then the biggest value, the minus key on my keyboard, the smallest value, enter, 163. So we have 96 and 163. So, 96. Helps if you type it right. 96 and 163. All right. Next up, the sample standard deviation. Okay, so again, sample standard deviation. I also know that it's the sample because I see an S instead of a sigma here. Um, and this is where I'm going to have to be careful on Excel. So I want the car one sample standard deviation. And I am going to have to make a distinction here. All right, because again, we find the standard deviation differently depending on whether it is a sample or a population. And we need to denote that. But again, I want Excel to do the calculations, so equals. And to do standard deviation, well, we essentially just abbreviate each of these. ST for standard, DEV for deviation. And again, you start to see that Excel is going to try to guess what formula you want. And for a sample, at the end, I want to do dot S for sample. Now again, parentheses as always, and Highlight the data, enter, and there's car one, sample standard deviation. Car two, sample standard deviation. Again, it's an equal sign. All right. And then standard deviation, ST, DEV, and because it's a sample, dot S. In my parentheses, I highlight my data that I want to use, enter. And there we go. So let's see. So rounding to one decimal place. Looks like we have 26.9 and 48.7. So 26.9 and 47. Let me double check. Oh, no. 48.7. Check. And there we go. Nice work. And continue. Last part. Which car should he buy and why? Multiple choice. So car two, because it's the lower mean gas mileage. Well, that doesn't make sense. Car two, because of the larger range. And that doesn't really make sense. I mean, you would want a car that has a long range mileage wise, but not range when you're talking about how much gas it's gonna use. Car one, because it is a lower sample standard deviation and hence more predictable gas mileage, where D, there's no difference. All right, so the answer is definitely gonna be C. The smaller standard deviation we have, the more accurately we're going to be able to predict what's going to happen because all the data will be closer together. There's going to be less dispersion. You're not going to have any shocks if you buy car one and you run it um, and, and how much gas you're going to need, I guess. Uh, so that's definitely the best choice here. Let me check it. Perfect. And I hope this helps you get your homework done. Good luck and make sure you send me an email if you have any questions.